Welcome to Project Grown Up. This is a bi-weekly podcast about conquering the phenomenon known as adulthood through hard work, discussion, and most importantly, a lot of laughs. We hope you'll be a part of this project with us. You can start by being a part of this project by leaving us a five-star review. Hell yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm hey, Amy. Here with my co-host, Alex. Hello, hello. And Danielle. Hey, guys. What's up? We want to start off this week with one of our newer segments, the You Might Not Be a Grown-Up segment. I'll go first. If you start drinking every day before noon, you might not be a grown-up. It sounds like you might have some experience in that, Amy. (laughs) Only on weekends. All right. If your parents pay your rent, you might not be a grown-up. If you turn your sheets pink, your white sheets pink, you might not be a grown-up. I'm speaking from experience, yes. (laughs) (laughs) Did you try to bleach them back? No, I didn't because you know why? You also might not be a grown-up if you're still paying with five quarters to do your laundry mine takes eight quarters so you should be grateful whoa per load yeah it's it's four dollars for the washer and four dollars for the dryer (gasps) good hope you hang dry everything i don't i actually like doing this in your building um well that one's in the building i can go to the laundromat too but that's in the building jesus that is so expensive it's a little pricey it's a little pricey Wow, and I thought a dollar fifty was annoying. <laughs> if you clean the toilet once every three months, you might not be a grown up, and that's disgusting. <laughs> Amy, <laughs> Amy, don't tell me you do that, or is that Alex? I don't. I don't. No, I don't no. I just, I just imagine this scenario up. To be honest, I. I so okay, I, I, was I clean. Like, you're gonna see crap start to build. That's pretty gross. <laughs> no, I, I clean like frequently and i asked my boyfriend i was like when was the last time that you personally cleaned the toilet and he couldn't remember which means a i do all the cleaning and b if i wasn't around he would never clean the toilet so oh i'm he might not be a (laughs) grown-up yeah so i i could see that because before i moved into my apartment my junior year of college which was off campus by the way like three or four guys lived there before us that guys shower so- was like orange. My dad got in there. God bless you, dad, and cleaned the crap out of it. I mean, you the bathroom might was not just be the a most grown up your dad I've ever seen. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> okay, I was I was 19, 18, no, 20. I was only 20 at the time, so I'm going to JK right now cuz my mom just literally cleaned my bathroom tonight before I hopped on this podcast. Thank you, mom. Wow. <laughs> Lord knows I need the help. So- that is so nice. I was just thinking how much I really appreciate my mom today because, like, she does so much for me. Like, I was like, you know, they really don't get enough credit. Like, she's sending me four packs of beer. So, like, a specialty beer that they make in Arizona. It's really, really good. Like, it's super light, and I wanted to drink it when I go on vacation in the summer to, like, this house that we're running. And... She's like, well, I don't want to forget. And I'm like, mom. And let's keep in mind, like, a six pack is like $12.99 because it's like from a brewery in Arizona. Wait, so I was like, for the shipping and everything, too. Yeah. Or the yeah. shipping from the factory. Yeah. Yeah. So, anyways, you know, it's just like the little things moms do. Like, they're the best. Shout out to moms. So, ironically, talking about your, uh, your mom's cleaning up your places, this week on Project Grown Up, I want the dirty details. We're getting in deep here, ladies. So we've talked about health, finances. Now I want to know how you maintain your domain. Because we all have our own places now. We're technically adults. And then as you know, I just got my own apartment. No more roommates. So I need to figure out how to maintain a home. First and foremost, what is the best part of having your own place? It's just, it's super nice to come home and like have your own space. I mean, like, you know, it's honestly when I the first time I was really out on my own was when I moved to Fargo because I'd always had roommates prior to that. And even growing up, I always shared a room with my sister. So that was like the first real time that I didn't share space with anyone. At first, I was like, this is really weird. But then you grow to like really appreciate the fact that you 
can come home after a day of talking to so many people at work and whatnot to just like have some well-deserved alone time in my opinion (laughs) i agree i think like my last well two weeks ago now the one day i like got home from work and it was a super long day i worked overtime so i was there till like eight o'clock and i came home i turned on the tv sat down cracked open a beer i took the first drink and literally was like "Ah," it made the noise and i'm like oh my god it's like i'm in the movies oh my gosh amy you're so funny yeah i think the best part of having your own place is you know having the space to do whatever you want to do whether that be activity wise decorating wise it's great but it definitely comes with some downfalls in my opinion what are the downfalls what's what do you think is the worst part of having your own place other than I your mean, boyfriend never cleaning. <laughs> I, well. Cleaning for two? <laughs> yeah. I mean, if anything has to get done, you're the only one who, ha- who can do it. And also, being alone also has a downfall in the sense of, like, you have to grow to get comfortable with being by yourself. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. I, so I'm an only child, so I'm used to being alone frequently, kind of spending alone time and that kind of thing. But I hate, I hate living alone. It feels unnatural because it kind of does. We're as animals, we're social creatures and it's built into our DNA that we are supposed to live, survive and thrive in a pack and if you're not doing that, then something's wrong. And I'm talking to like very like animalistic baseline here. Obviously in real yeah. society, if you're living alone, you're not weird. It's fine. <laughs> it's normal, especially at this age. But it 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 feels like and now, even if you have a roommate that you don't necessarily are, you know, best friends forever with, but like you come home and they're kind of like in the common space and, you know, you can choose to like spend time with them or you can go to your room and kind of do what you want on your own. It just makes a bigger difference. That's just me. I prefer having other people around. It makes me feel more secure, safe, uh, better peace of mind than being alone. I agree. I didn't think, well, I don't know. I'm a social butterfly. So I kind of knew going in that that was going to be the hardest part for me, you know, the loneliness and keeping myself entertained all the time. I'm thinking about getting a fish, to be honest, because it's only a couple of weeks. Amy, I did that and I, I, we know how that ended. (laughs) I successfully kept my beta fish for over a year and a half and then it died. Yeah, Aww. I was going to say. I, and I told you guys, remember? Yeah, we remember the pet episode. We remember the fish was dead. And then you're like, well, I got to go to work. He just left his little dead body <laughs> floating. Yeah. We well, remember. okay, so that's the crazy part. Psycho. The fish was at the bottom the whole time. Dean. Dean was his name. R.I.P. <laughs> Dean. He's with the other fishes. Anyways, no. I, uh, I would agree with Alex. I personally would rather live with someone than be alone. However... I've gotten really used to it. Like, it's actually interesting because I've noticed, like, how much I actually missed being around other people because I spend so much time with Dave. So I really do miss that a lot now that I've, like, kind of gotten a taste of that again, if that makes sense. Even though we don't really live together because, you know, I do, like, make dinner with him a lot and just, like, those kinds of things that you might normally do when you live with somebody. So, but I think in your case... I think you're really going to grow to appreciate it. Yeah, I think so too. You, I, you know, like it is what it is right now, so you're going to have to get used to it. Yeah, but, and I have a lot of I'll have a lot of free time, so definitely a lot of time for personal growth. And then honestly, Claudia has 5 minutes down the street, so I can still hang out with her whenever. So I'm- did she really <laughs> move out or oh, oh my gosh, that's so funny. Also, um, you know, you know what I realized in living alone, it forced me cuz I I, it, I was kind of like Alex, where I didn't like it for a long time. And especially moving to new places, I was like, well, I don't want to spend all my time inside just watching TV. Like, yeah, you no, know, you can only clean so much of your apartment before you're like, OK, I'm bored. <laughs> <laughs> like I need I want to meet people. So I found myself trying to do more things to meet people in the area. So it does kind of get you off your ass, so to speak. That kind of brings up my next question, actually. So we kind of all agreed that we'd prefer to live with someone than to live alone. But another scenario, would you rather have like your own place that you design it, you make it a home, what have you, but you have to, you're like in charge of it? Or would you have like want to have a 
hotel house setup where they design everything. You live there full time, but they do all of the cleaning for you. You just can't de- do the decorating. I personally would rather design my own place because just putting some of the stuff up in my apartment that I did when I moved to Buffalo, I was so proud of it. I'm like, man. Plus, like, I feel like everybody has a different style when it comes to design. So, you know, whether it be like fashion or even designing what your own place is going to look like on the inside when you put up like wall art and all that. So I would personally wall rather. Art. Yeah, wall art, whatever. I actually just bought some wall art today and I specifically looked on Amazon for Ohio wall art. And that's not exactly what I was looking you know, for. Well, Amy, you know what you sh- you could do? Um, I did. I bought three little DIY. Flowers. <laughs> yeah, honestly, I that's what I did. I did a lot of DIY stuff, but it was nothing because I don't really. I think I have very a lot more of like a minimalist type of yeah. A- Alex agrees with me. A minimalist type of uh, lifestyle. Lifestyle, mm-hmm. yeah. I think that's especially really in right now because you know it's always better to go simple. And have it look nice, then go too big and have it look like tacky or whatever. So I got three little clocks from Amazon. And then I actually put like, um, because, you know, I'm from Chicago and then my parents are in Arizona and then I live in Buffalo. So I did like the different time That's zones. Cute. That's cute. cute. I like that. Alex, what about you? Do you want to design your own place or would you rather have someone clean it for you 24-7? <sighs> I keep saying that when well, she gonna... has her mom to do that now, so apparently it don't matter. <laughs> it's because my parents are staying with me because I told I called them and said, Mom, Dad, I need help. I need you to come take care of me because I'm pathetic. Um, <laughs> but no, that's not going to be an, a long term thing. But anyway, so I'm really torn because I have this like grand extravagant idea for this house that I want built where it's like. Imagine a square house, but in the middle it's cut out and it's like a garden where all the rooms look onto this garden. Oh, that's pretty cool. I kind of want it like a fortress style. So like, you know, no one can come in and break in also because I'm going to have a moat. (laughs) I'm thinking about it. Why not? You know, that is one thing you definitely think about when you live alone, like on your for the first time. Is you like, start getting psycho. Oh my gosh. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh my gosh. Very so paranoid. Nice. My dad asks me, he's like, like my first night staying alone. He's like, you'll be okay. Do you have a baseball bat? And I'm like, yes, I have a baseball bat. I have my knife that has a razor blade on the end. I have a sword. I have gardening. <laughs> a sword? Tape, pepper spray. I'm set. Like, I have weapons all around Is that illegal in Florida? <laughs> what? Which one? All that? All of the above. Yeah, actually, Florida's it's a Florida, state. Florida, state. So if anyone enters your home and you feel like your life's being threatened whatsoever, you are f- like fully in your right to kill them. Whoa. If they're on your property and you feel threatened, you can kill them and you'll be fine because it's a stand <laughs> your ground state. So yeah, I'm covered. But good tip, side note, my dad advised me never spray the pepper spray if you're like inside and someone's trying to get you because the pepper spray will affect you just as much as it affects them. And I never so, considered that before. So you know so how I know story? this already? Because oh, oh. some girl in my freshman class decided to spray it in class. Our entire class started coughing and had to get out of the room. I was oh, like, you can't be serious. I can't believe you just did that. I was going to say one time my mom had pepper spray in her cabinet when I was little. And I was like, I'm just going to spray this and see what happens. So I <laughs> spray it in the bathroom and I was like, oh, shit. So I walked out and like closed the door. And then she went in and like started having a full blown asthma attack. So I went in and I was like, mom, mom, you should probably come out of there. Like, come on, come on, come on. And she's like, oh, my God. Oh, my God. Like, what's going on? I was like, I sprayed the pepper spray on the mirror. <laughs> <laughs> almost <laughs> killed my mom <laughs> oh my god okay back to the question though I'm kind of feeling though like with my lifestyle right now I would really appreciate this hotel house where I just live there and someone comes and like cleans the bedding and mops the floor and like I just live there and then I leave and then I go stay in my other states or countries or what have you, as Amy says. Honestly, that sounds like a dream life. I'm kind of I'm kind of sold on that too now. Because I'm not one for decor anyways. I really have no idea how to design my own place. 
So I think if someone else can just design it and clean it, I'll just live there and be nice. Like, I think that would work out for me. But speaking of that, like, I have been struggling and just asking friends' opinions for, like, design because I have no idea how to decorate. So where do you guys get your, like, design and decorative ideas? Like, Alex, how'd you come up with this plant fortress? (laughs) This plant fortress. (laughs) So probably HGTV. I watch a lot of HGTV. Oh my gosh. I think that's just part of being an adult because we have literally watched every episode of Love It or List It. Oh no, that is the worst HGTV show. <laughs> well, we can't, we couldn't watch it Behind all the because they get so annoying. But you know, I, I love that one that uh, takes place in Waco, Texas. Do you know which one I'm talking about? They, they have their own store. They have their own line in Target. And uh, I know. I actually have a couple Joanna. of their little bowls. Yeah. And Are you talking they, about the husband and wife? Yeah, yeah. Chip and Joe Gaines. They also just got like their own channel on TV or something. Oh wow! Yeah, they're like killing it. Good for them. But yeah, I, I felt oh, like proud of them when I saw their line in Target. They had Target had like a whole section for them, and I was like, oh, look at them on the come up. It's because they have a really, really um, cool style. I would say. It's also like I, a you know, I, I don't I don't love everything so that they do, but I would say that, yes, when I walk into Target, I want to buy their whole line. I agree. I agree. Danielle, where do you get your like design ideas? Is it also from HGTV? Um, kind of. I mean, I think it's kind of like, you know, if I had a home right now, I would kind of reference that in terms of like what's the style as of right now. I feel like islands are like the biggest thing in kitchens right now. Like, holy crap. Like every time you watch something on HGTV. So we're going to put in a big island right here. Like, it's I just love an of, island. Like, I know. I really want one. And then like put little stools around it. But in terms of when I moved to Buffalo, I kind of like slowly did it over a few months. I was like, OK, what do I want to put on this wall? Like. I don't want to make everything look too busy by putting something on every single wall. I don't know. You kind of just figure it out as you go and kind of learn to get used to the space and where you need to add something or where you need to not have something necessarily. Yeah, I think it's a gradual process. Also, I love Pinterest, Pinterest, whatever. I love how you can create boards for different moods, different themes, like I definitely would say that helped me decorate color scheme and everything at my condo in Florida. So highly recommend getting on that. I also created a board for podcast topics. I did see that today. I did just follow you. It's because I sent it to like both of you three times. (laughs) (laughs) Third time's a charm. Okay. So there's one place in your home that you have to maintain more than the others. It's the most important part of your home. What are you keeping in the refrigerator (laughs) and the cabinets? Nada. Nada. Oh, Lord. Oh, man. I believe that for Alex. I got a lot of stuff in my fridge. (laughs) Like probably too much. Is it like a super disorganized fridge? Because I've always like my favorite part of ever watching MTV Cribs and stuff like that was just the refrigerators because they just have (laughs) lines of different kinds of drinks. And that's my end goal in life is to have that in my fridge. I definitely have a very organized fridge in the sense of like I will always put the milk right here next to the eggs next to the butter and then like. The top shelf is for drinks and my two Brita's. I have two Brita's because the one's like four years old and it's a really small one. So I bought another really small one. So I have more water. <laughs> it's I know I should just get a big one and call it a day and make my life No, easier. you shouldn't buy any more. You shouldn't buy any more cheese enough. No, no, I shouldn't. So anyways, that's the top shelf. Then on the second shelf is kind of like random stuff. And then the third shelf is like there's just a bunch of extra space. And then so like the. Those two shelves are kind of like whatever food I buy for that week. And then, you know, on the bottom is like the veggies and the fruits and those little two little containers that you push in. Yes, I have a way that I organize it. But is it always organized in the sense of like when you open it, you're not like, whoa, what the hell happened in here? (laughs) No, (laughs) no, it's not because I'm an. I'm a person and nobody keeps their stuff that organized. But It's not overflowing with takeout containers? Um, it has in the pizza. past. It has in the past. I mean, yeah. I mean, we haven't ordered pizza in a long time because we're trying to be healthy, so. I ate pizza made... last night. Oh, that sounds so good. I made zucchini pasta yesterday. Oh, really I love good. noodles. Oh my gosh, I should send you guys a recipe. I sent it to my mom. It's um, zucchini fritters. You make it with 
zucchini, carrot. We didn't use sweet potato because we didn't. Neither of us had it. We only had a regular potato. And then like just some different spices, and then you can choose whatever flour you want. And we had made something with almond flour in it because it was. I was trying something that Vinny from uh, Jersey Shore. Yeah, made, I have like, the almond sort flour of, too. Some sort of keto pizza. Oh my gosh, the crust was so good, but uh, the pizza itself was eh. But anyways, that's beside the point. You can send that to me, but I don't cook. I scavenge. <laughs> it's too easy. Just make Marco shred all of it, cause. Yeah, if you uh, take, uh, I just don't like find it satisfying to cook. Oh wow, you got some uh, skin in that uh, zucchini fritter. That sounds tasty. No, no, <laughs> they're they're super easy though, and super. I would say they're pretty healthy for you. So I'll send but it to you. But the thing is, like, I'd rather just eat Cheerios because I don't care. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I'm like all about scavenging, like just Amy, surviving on whatever's there. It's you Alex, know, fine. I think that I got you in too deep on Paris Hilton because you're starting to sound like her. <laughs> I am like so into Paris Hilton, guys. I'm all about her. <laughs> no, on the side note, though, I highly recommend her documentary that's on. Uh, Absolutely. I've right been now. recommending it to people. It's so um, good. I told you. I'm a huge Paris Hilton fan now. What's the documentary on? Um, it's, a, it's just about Paris Hilton. It's about her life, but it's called. What's it called? I am Paris. Just like being Paris. Yeah, you look that? like Paris Hilton documentary on YouTube. On YouTube? But it, it's, it's so more good. than like her life. Like she's been through some deep, dark shiz. And also, like the personality that I was familiar with was a facade. Like it's something she puts on a persona and she admits that. Yeah. And then it tells you, then she goes into depth, like why she puts that persona on, not only for money, but because XYZ happened to her and some dark stuff. So, Definitely recommend. I'm a big Paris fan now. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like, that's hot. <laughs> Isn't she actually super smart? Yeah. Actually, Dude, like, 100% she, smart. She's, a, she's like, like killing genius. it. Yeah. Yeah, she's, um, she's hungry, and I appreciate that hunger. And not talking about food. I'm talking about money. <laughs> what if so we want both? Money, honey. Well, I mean, once you get the money, you can definitely be hungry and eat whatever you want. And guess what? You don't have to cook it. You can pay for your own chef. That's what I'm talking about. Exactamente. And then somebody can clean your house, too. So you ain't even got to worry about nothing. Yes, yeah, you live yeah, in that your hotel chef can lifestyle. keep those uh, cabinets and fridge stocked. <laughs> Grocery That's shopping what I'm all about. is my least favorite thing to do. And I feel like I do it too much. Order your groceries, like, online. Instacart. Yeah, it's worth it sometimes, honestly. It's definitely worth it. Or you can like order it and then go pick it up and they'll put it in your car. That was super convenient. I've done that at Wegmans once and man, it is so nice. And you get to avoid being around all those people. Which honestly, I don't want to be around that many people during COVID or in general. So obviously none of us. What? I was going to ask you. So like, are you keeping your fridge stocked? I know you're a big wing fan. You eat in those wings. Like what what are you doing? (laughs) Now Actually, that you're on your own without Claudia cooking for you. It's been hard, honestly. I miss her cooking skills. But I did learn a few key recipes in the last couple of years. So I've been doing really well. I have kept wings stocked on deck and bacon because I'm trying to be a slightly more keto. But I've just been planning out like three meals a week and then making enough for two people so that I can have leftovers. So like last week I made steaks and asparagus one night. The next night I made tuna steaks. And then we made, well, I did go to her house and we made ceviche, but (laughs) I'm doing pretty good. I haven't been buying any like chips or like cookies or anything like that because I know it's just me and I'll eat all of them. So Mm -hmm. I've been, I've been doing pretty good and I've been eating like, I've been buying fresh fruit, cantaloupe and bananas and strawberries and such. So I'm growing. I'm growing. I, my first thing when I moved out, I'm like, all right, Amy, you cannot go back to hot dogs and pizza rolls. Like, you're old now. It's not acceptable. So I've been sticking to it. That's awesome. So we're talking about how none of us want to cook for ourselves or clean for ourselves. <laughs> with that being said... Whoever wants to. Well, I guess unless <laughs> you like to cook. With that being said, do you have any secret cleaning tips? Like, ours is instead of buying, like, Febreze, because it doesn't really last that long. We just got ours, a spray bottle. Amy. Amy, what? you live by yourself. Oh, Who's this yes. ours? It should you're be right. I. Well... My secret cleaning tip that I stole from someone who we won't even, you don't even know who, but I stole it from someone. 
who was really good at cleaning, <laughs> just get a spray bottle instead of doing Febreze. You get a spray bottle, you fill it up with half water, and then you put fabric softener in it and mix it up together and spray that on like the furniture, the bedding, rugs, anything like that. Instead of Febreze, it lasts so much longer and it's a much fresher smell. Probably cheaper. I don't use Febreze enough. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I uh, It's just not something I ever really buy. I don't really have any secret home cleaning tips, I guess. Oh, actually, I do. So instead of using fabric softener, which is going to cost you a lot more, you can use vinegar to For do what? your laundry. Does it smell like vinegar? No. I mean, it's going to smell like vinegar when you put it in, but Wait, when you're done... wash, like, laundry so, like, detergent or softener? No, no, no. So you have to use laundry detergent, but instead of having to use fabric softener, you can use vinegar. Like white distilled mm. vinegar. And not only does it act as a fabric softener, also kills the smell of gym clothes, for example. It's Brilliant. awesome. I use it all the time. I think the first time I did it, Dave was like, what are you doing? And now he's like, did you bring the vinegar? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so playing off both of these ideas, you can also use vinegar to clean your windows or you can use rubbing alcohol to clean your mirrors. You can also use oils like lavender oil, eucalyptus oil. You can mix that in a bottle of water, a spray bottle, and use that for fabric softener so it doesn't have any harsh chemicals or any of that stuff. Or if you're cleaning your clothes, you can put a couple drops of tea tree oil, which is antibacterial, antimicrobial, my, microbial, microbial, microbial. Yep, that's the word. You can put a couple <laughs> drops of that in your laundry, and that will also kill the gym smell. Did now, I'm going to give you the utmost home secret cleaning tip, and that's just don't mess it up in the first place, and it's a <laughs> lot easier to clean, okay? <laughs> oh, my gosh. This is like wisdom from another level. Who knew? Basically. it's Just keep it clean all the time, and then it's so easy to clean it. <laughs> yeah. Except, you know, sometimes the bathroom is not the easiest place to keep clean. So, Well, girl, what are you doing in the bathroom? Are you messing no, it up? No, I just mean, like, the sink. It's, like, my sink is, like, a very weird material. Because it's, I don't know. But anyways, but like, so, okay, like, so I for clean example, it, And then the very next time I even brush my teeth, like, there's toothpaste on the bottom of the sink. Like, I can't. You just put it right into the drain. Yeah, I know, I do. But then, not to mention, like, I'll, or, like, I'll wash off my makeup, and it, like, slightly turns it orange. When you got, like, say you have your washcloth to wash your face, whatever, after that, just, like, wipe the countertop down after you're done. So, like, it's not necessarily, like, clean, but all that yuckiness isn't sticking. So then when you do go to clean, all you have to do is spray and, like, wipe it down or just spray and leave it and it cleans the bacteria. Clean yeah, as you I get, like I get you're a ton like of water scrubbing. everywhere. Yeah, I get a ton of water everywhere too, so I kind of have to do that. God, what are you doing in the bathroom? Right. Well, I'm no, nervous. because I no because I put I use like cl- the Clinique take the day off stuff, which is awesome. And then after that, so that just takes off the makeup. Then I put on you know my face wash, and you know I splash my face, and it does not look anything like in those commercials. Okay, I am a mess. It goes everywhere, on the sink. I mean, <laughs> okay, <It's, laughs> you're splashing water on your face. Sometimes it gets on you know other parts of the sink. Sometimes mm-hmm. it gets on my shirt. You know, I'm a mess. Oh, all right. Last but not least, I want to know what's one thing in your home that just gives you the best vibes. For me, it's my bookshelves. And shout out to Alex for putting them together for me. I got the Ikea bookshelves and I was in a tizzy. Like, how on earth am I going to put things together? This is why I never lived alone. And Alex came over and put together my bookshelves. So thank you. But that just gives me the best vibe. And every time I, like, walk into my house or I'm just sitting there, I just look at them and I'm like, oh, so happy. I guess I would say the setup of my living room because it's the the space I spend my most time in. I wish I could say it was my room, but my room is really tiny, so I don't spend much time there, like, you know, other than putting clothes away, sleeping every once in a while, and then whatnot. Are you a vampire now? You're not sleeping? No, it's because if I'm not sleeping there, I'm sleeping here. I'm sleeping at Dave's. (laughs) (laughs) Guys, I'm in a silly mood. 
<laughs> that was so weird how you said that. It's because I'm being Paris Helen. Yeah, it's the no. Paris vibes. I think yes. it's that wine getting to you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> got Mick Paris. Anyway. Yes, she did so good. No, I know. Got Mick. Y'all got to watch RuPaul's Drag Race Friday we'll night. I'll do give it. her a shout out. We'll, we'll tag her in the episode. Got Mick. Comes- you love I love you and you better fucking win. Anyway, so from my house, it's so important to have plants and decent lighting. Now it doesn't necessarily like you can work with a north facing window, which means you're not gonna have as much, you know, decent daylight throughout the day. It's gonna be darker. If you can get an east, west, or south, I mean it might be a little hotter. If you can get decent light in there, that's gonna make all the world of a difference. Add some plants to just give it a nice, clean, fresh, energetic vibe. And as I said before, if you just keep your house clean, it, it's just it's going to be amazing when you walk in every single time. I agree that uh, lighting from the outside is like the best thing because I don't know. It just makes you I don't know. I just really love it. Like I don't really put on my lights at all. Not at least until nighttime. Natural lighting is definitely the best vibe. Breath of fresh air with the plants. I 100% agree. As an adult, it's important to maintain your domain. You want to feel comfortable and positive, and you want your guests to feel the same way. Whether it means you need to clean your windows more often or buy some new hand towels, keep it classy and keep your home together. Before we wrap up, you know we got to slay that Q&A where we answer listeners' questions in a fun ending segment. If you have any questions you want to submit, reach us at P-R-O-J Grown Up. That's Proj Grown Up on Twitter or Instagram. First and foremost, this is my own question because I want the dirty deets. What is the grossest thing that you've ever had to clean up? Be honest. Vomit? Yes. Um, I've I've cleaned out a few oh god (laughs) mine someone else's I've also had to clean like the floor with like a nice thick mud coat after a college party god what else have I had to clean oh I recently had to clean um, a, a pint of spilled milk in my car that my boyfriend you know he's not cleaning the toilets he's not cleaning the car I don't know what he's doing no I'm just playing. I'm picking on him. But no, that smelled (laughs) disgusting. That actually smelled like vomit. It was repulsive. And I had to clean it out. Let me give you a quick tip. If you got stinky smells in your car that are especially milky, nasty, vomity smells in your car, use baking soda. Just put it all over the floor, all over everything. Vacuum it up later. It will fix that little issue. That's an amazing (laughs) That sounds awful. Yeah, it was disgusting. That's been and the all most of that recent. sounds disgusting. I, so sorry. Yeah, you yeah. have such a hard time. With, you can see why you know, I want cleaners just... now, okay? You can see why yeah. I want cleaners. <laughs> yeah, no, I definitely can't. There was a week this past summer that I was off from work, and I was still in Buffalo, so I was like, eh, I don't have a whole lot to do, and I could make some extra money by cleaning this uh, two-bedroom apartment Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. It was a three-bedroom apartment. <sighs> the work I did to that place, I did not get paid enough. Yeah, we told you not I to sign up for that. $100. $100 for a yeah, three-bedroom? I I was, yeah, I know. They I was, worked honestly, here. Mm-hmm. Honestly, that was ridiculous. I should have been like, you need to pay me like 300 bucks for this. Because that bathroom was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. The kitchen was the most disgusting thing I've ever seen. Oh, man. I literally just... That whole place was disgusting. I couldn't, like, my fingertips, because the person didn't even give me the right tools to use, my fingertips were just, like, all red for, like, a week because of the bleach. I have never cleaned up anything so disgusting in my entire life. I would say that my worst is when our toilet, like, our septic tank backed up. So it wasn't even, like, overflowing out of the, like, toilet. It was coming out of the floor where the toilet is. Ew. And it was just, like, you light take the brown. Cake, it was just, like, light brown water. And I was, like, working. So I was, like, I had to call off work immediately because I was working from home. And the whole bathroom was flooding. And I was just, <gasps> I had no idea what to do. I was panicking. Ew. 
I was like crying. And then I was like, do I need to, um, I was like, call I, plumber. I called Claudia. I called my dad at both of them at work and I'm like panicking and I'm like, is this even poop water? What is this? <laughs> and I also had like the small one with me. So I'm like, he wanted to play in the water. So I just picked him up. I just oh, picked no. him up and like moved him into the kitchen and I'm like, you need to stay here. And I just took a bunch of towels and tried to like sop it up. But I'm like, this is so disgusting. And so it was, was like, the issue. It was just like a plumbing issue from like, cause we lived in apartments. So the, it was like three people's apartments all flooded at once. So because it poop, water? someone had like put a bunch of like diapers or something down there. What? So You're it not backed supposed up to and, like, do that. Oh my gosh. Busted. In one person's apartment, the pipe busted and their whole apartment was flooded. But there were like three other people in the apartments that just their bathrooms flooded. But it was just a nightmare. I was just traumatized. I couldn't even not clean it up, though, because it was so much water. I'm like, please don't flood the whole place. So I just had to go in ankles deep in the poop water and go for it. It was rough, though. It reminded me I of the dirty job. I honestly episode. puke, Amy, from seeing that. Yeah, it was a lot. Luckily, there were no like floaters. There's no, no, stop. <laughs> oh my gosh, stop. I would have shut the door and been like... And move out. Just <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I feel like everything that's in the bathroom is staying in there. I'm not touching this stuff. I'm not touching this crap, literally. literally. Our listener Ty wants to know, what is your pet peeve at your house? Oh, I got one. I thought I could live with no AC during the summer. Girl... And it is so hard to stay cool in there. And I mean any time of the year. It is always really warm in my apartment. And I cannot stand that. Because I have radiators. And I don't know if you knew this. But if you have a radiator and you put it on. You're supposed to leave the windows open all the time. Because it gets so hot. Even if you turn it on the slightest bit. Like it's... It gets way too hot in there. Like, there's been times before where I walked in and I'm like, I feel like I'm going to pass out. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. I think it's that my apartment is not temperature controlled to some extent. I'm also very nervous about that. I only have one air conditioner. It's like a wall air conditioner. It's not like a central air. So I'm really nervous about the summer, how the summer in Florida is going to be. Because I'm like, oh, my gosh. It's, it's going to be really bad. But I'm going to try and push through. So... Fingers crossed. But if you're struggling up north, I'm real nervous about how Florida is going to handle me. <laughs> but I would say for my answer, I don't have a pet peeve at my house yet because it's only been a couple weeks. But a pet peeve that I have with other people's houses, I hate when I go to someone's house and I go to use the bathroom. And first off, if there's no hand soap in the bathroom, I'm questioning you completely. <laughs> Yes. You should at least have hand soap, but it's my pet peeve when there's no hand towel. Like I have to dry my hands. Mm-hmm. Like, do you guys yeah, not you wash your hands? Their, like, like you big towel, and you're like, that could have touched. Who knows but, what? <laughs> whose butts was that touching? Basically, yeah. But I still use those towels. I don't complain about those. I just need to have something to dry my hands on. Even if you have a dirty shirt in the bathroom hanging up, I'll use your shirt. But I need to dry my hands. <laughs> use the shower curtain. <laughs> it's <laughs> neutral <an> territory. <laughs> It's probably cleaner than the towel. For real. Who knows how many times that wiped the butt. All right. I'd say my pet peeve. God, I have so many because we'll just say that I'm quite particular about things. (laughs) That's a nice way to say it. That's a nice way to say I hate when there's dishes in the sink. Like, okay, one dish, you leave it next day that's fine but like don't be piling up dishes especially when there's a dishwasher you rinse it off and you put it in there it's not that hard it does not take that much time like just do it my other pet peeve and like this is not really anyone's fault but I hate a dirty floor I hate things sticking to my feet I hate how a dirty floor looks it makes the whole house feel dirty and then you walk and then you get in bed and you bring that gross crumbs and hair into the bed into the clean sheets like oh gotta have a clean floor I will say that's really hard in Florida though because there's sand everywhere and the so tile like, floor oh my god yeah so since I moved to Florida I always wear socks because you can literally sweep three times a day, every day. And there's still going to be, if you walk around barefoot, you're still going to get sand on your feet. Like, even if you haven't been to the beach in six months, it's just how everywhere you go, there's sand. 
So it like it drives me absolutely freaking nuts. But it's to the point where like I can't walk around barefoot. But that's why I recommend rugs because House rugs slippers. having rugs. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. But having rugs like in front of your door outside, and then as soon as you walk in inside, and then like area rugs too definitely helps you know collect some of that sand. But Gross. Girl, well, at least whatever. At least your feet aren't walking around crummy. How much sand is there near you? Jeez. It's just everywhere. Well, like, instead of dirt, dirt, it's just all sand. So when you step in the grass, there's sand. It's there's sand. sand everywhere. Oh, yeah. for real? Yeah. Yeah. There's it makes not, like, mowing dirt. the yard really hard. Wow, that's strange. Okay. Well, last question. Would you rather have ten cats or one pet snake? I feel like I know Alex's answer. Well, I've had a pet snake before, and they are not pleasant to feed. Um, (laughs) but 10 cats, like one cat is mm, nasty. An indoor cat, you don't know how much they're filling up that litter box and like gross. And then they step in that stuff and then they take their dirty little paws and walk on the countertops in the bed in between the sheets. Like, and then, and then, and then you're stepping on the litter with your bare feet in the house on the tile floor. Think about it. Can you imagine having 10 of those guys now if they were like barn cats and lived outside and like you didn't, you know, actually have to own them maybe, but otherwise 10 cats or one pet snake. I'm going to go with the pet snake. What about you, Amy? Yeah, I also have to go with the snake because we have like Claudia has one cat, little cat. He's an indoor outdoor cat, so he's cool. He poops outside and stuff, but he's just a lot of energy so like i could not <laughs> with 10 cats i would literally just let them have my apartment and i would sleep at my parents house <laughs> like, i could not maintain that domain oh my gosh so can i would go with the, one the pet snake. smell can no. you imagine yeah, the smell gross. Ew. Gross. <laughs> yeah and on that note i guess i'm gonna have to go with the pet snake too because we never said it had to be like a boa constrictor type snake i will get the tiniest one i'd put it in a clear box and I would never let it. I would let it die. The, well, that's rude. Wow! <laughs> that's wow! So I'm far. sorry. I do not like. I do not like snakes. Okay, I am not about that life. Plus, what? Don't What's snakes eat like mice and stuff? I'm not gonna yeah. to put a dead mouse in that thing and watch. No, no, no. Are you you mice mouse in my own home? You buy a live mouse and then yeah. you drop it in the cage, or and take the snake it. out of the cage and feed them the live mouse, and then they eat the mouse. Have it's, you watched that before? Yeah. I told you I had a snake. Yeah, I used to feed live mice to the snake. Ew. My mom used to have a snake too, and I used to watch it eat. And it's so creepy because it Don't like they sometimes just swallow it whole and then it just like sits in there. Yeah, well it slowly digests. So you can see it like going in, like they dislocate their jaw to take it in. So you can see them slowly getting like the chunk of the mouse. You can just see it going down their body. It's really Mm -hmm. cool, but it's pretty gross. But it's kind of sad, though, because it's a live mouse. And sometimes if the snake's not that hungry, like my mom had a big snake, so she would put two mice in there at a time. And usually it'll eat the first one, but then the other mouse is just playing. He doesn't even know what's going on. He's just running around checking out this new cage. Like, ooh, there's a little water bowl. Let me get a drink of water. And when he's not looking, the snake just, like, hinds up, and it starts, like, moving a little bit. And then it just, oh, it gets it. It constricts. It gets it. It's crazy. Ew. You should, Ew. You should no see thanks. it going. It's pretty cool. It's a circle of life, man. I'm selling myself on this snake right now. Maybe maybe that's what I maybe need. You to should get a snake time. instead of a fish, Amy. No, you, you could use the snake as a weapon in case anybody tries to yes. <laughs> yeah. That's a great idea. Just feel like, it's like you named the snake Larry. Larry, go get the go, go get that guy. Larry, attack! He's a mouse. He's a the giant mouse. <laughs> Clearly, what we've concluded is that snake security is the ultimate way to maintain your domain. Before we go, we, of course, want to leave you with some words to live by. This week, it comes from Dorothy from The Wizard of Oz, written by L. Frank Baum. There's no place like home. Join us for new episodes every other week. They'll be dropping Monday, so you can start the week off right as we unravel another chapter of Project Grown Up. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast, leave us a five-star review, and if you know anyone or you would be great for our PG-inspiring stories, send us an email at progrownup, that's progrownup at gmail.com. 
Hopefully you found some keys to success in this episode. Cheers to another week of trying to be a grown-up. Cheers, ladies. Cheers. Cheers, everyone.